in our 25th class of Mundaka Upanishad with Swamiji. We are now doing chapter two, section one, mantra three. A very warm welcome to everyone here. The last half hour will be for questions and answers. This morning, Yogacharya Venudas Ji will chant verses three and four of Dasha Sloki. Swamiji, we have a request. Would Swamiji please talk a few words about General Bipin Rawat and the others who laid their lives in their line of duty? Namaste. Venudas Ji. Namaste. Namaste Swamiji. Oh. Shruti Smriti Purana Alayam Karuna Alayam Namami Bhagavat Padam Shankaram Loka Shankaram Namastas May Bhagavate Shankaracharya Rupine Yena Vedanda Vidyayam Udhrita Veda Sagara Adha Dasha Shloki Namata Pita Vana Deva Naroka Naveta Nayatna Natirdham Bruvanti Sushupta Nirasati Shunyak Magatwad Tadeko Vashishta Shiva Kevaloham Tadeko Vashishta Shiva Kevaloham Nasangham Nashaivam Natatvan Jaratram Najainam Nami Mam Sakadir Matamba Vishishthanu Bhutya Vishuddhat Makaswat Tadeko Vashishta Shiva Kevaloham Tadeko Vashishta Shiva Kevaloham. Namaste. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Om Sada Shiva Samaryam Bham Shankar Acharya Madhyamam Asmad Acharya Paryandam Vande Guru Paramparam Om Bhadram Karne Bhishrunuyama Deva Bhadram Pashe Makshabhirya Jatra Stirai Rangai Stustuvam Sastanu Vir Vyashema Deva Hitam Yadayuhu 
स्वस्तेन इंद्रो वृद्ध श्रवा स्वस्ते नोषा विश्व स्वस्ते नाक्ष्यो अरिष्ट ने मे स्वस्ते न बृहस्पतिर्दा ओं शांति 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 <clears throat> now the whole nation is uh, saddened by the unexpected demise of our uh, chief of defense staff general bipin rawat ji so before starting this uh, satsang on upanishad let us pay our uh, respect our tribute our homage to that great great soul complete revamping of our military force and its modernization it is happening now our military all the three forces it is excellent considered as the bravest in the world even without sophisticated equipments and weapons they served and uh, saved our uh, nation because of their bravery and uh, now we are seeing fullest uh, revamping is happening in all respects so after uh, shri narendra modi ji came into power as the prime minister for the first time a bill was introduced and uh, act passed to post uh, chief of defense staff all the heads of different military groups say army navy and air force they do have their primacy of course the heads are there that force is under their control but at the same time it was uh, felt for our nation there must be a chief of defense staff and uh, general bipin rawat he became the first chief of defense staff of india his records how he worked and fought for our nation 
as the chief of army and even before as a general and in many other cadres his records that only brought him to the post of cds and after that what we are seeing the morale of our forces it flew to sublime heights it is not the effect of the activities of uh, only one chief but because of the collective activity of the government and of the forces and of course different planning and implementation of the national security council so what we are seeing since many years especially for five years is actually a synergizing activity is happening government military and national security council all are working abreast and that is making the glory of our nation higher and higher it is taking the glory of our nation to sublime heights that we saw in the case of uh, many many military activities like uh, surgical strikes in 2015 and uh, later as a retaliation of uh, the bagel court incident under general rawat all this happened a brave soldier worshiper of our motherland to the core of his heart he was respected by the whole of our nation military heads are respected within the force of course all our military heads got that respect from the cadres from the force but only a few could get that respect from the whole nation and the common society he had that greatness that is because of his uh, selfless service time bound action and the and the power to make cooperation within all the forces when the chief of defense staff was appointed for the first time in india there were many murmurings that how this will go either to there was no such a custom actually three heads will not sit together of course they will sit together on certain occasions but if uh, 
president of India or the prime minister are not convening such a meeting, normally they would not come together and sit. And if there is a head, what will happen to our nation? So this is an unbounded move. So, so many murmurings were there. But within a few years, General Ravati, he showed, no, it is for the safety and security and for protecting our integrity. He showed that. Especially when long lasted standoff happened between the forces of China and the, our mother night. Then we saw earlier when uh, Chinese pounced, we used to run back. Not because of the lack of courage from the part of military, no, but as the result of orders from the political leadership. But now, what we saw last time, that standoff lasted, and uh, finally, those who came to attack, they dispersed by themselves. And we are making all setups along the border. So that is happening. So at this time, the glory of our nation is going up and we are paying our respect to the great soldier who worked for our nation until his last breath. He was working for the nation and as a part of that mission, he had to go away from this seat. But we do not have any doubt The great model he puts before the nation, it will bring up more and more great soldiers. Youngsters will come up to lead, protect, and safeguard our nation. So, before that model, before that greatness, we are paying our respect, our homage. So with all respect, all of us have to keep within a prayer for him and other soldiers. who went along with him. So let us pray for him and other soldiers. And make it a point to keep all our soldiers in our prayers. Because we are living here. We are feeling safety and security. We are doing our works. Even we are criticizing the forces. How and why? Only because they are safeguarding. They are there. Alive and awake. Keeping a vigil. In the depths of ocean. And in the midst of hot sun and uh, in the 
ice, the cold weather which we cannot even imagine. So they are protecting us. We are protected only because of them. So always we have to put our brave soldiers, make them a part of our prayers daily. Do pray for them also. So with these words, let us pray, let us pay our respect and homage to that great soul. And now we can go to the part of Upanishad. So, in our last session, we had seen the the second mantra of the first khanda in the second mundaga. Today we, we have to go to the third mantra. The second mantra was the Vyohya Murta Purushaha Sabahya Bhyanda Rohya Jaha Apranohya mana shubhro yaksharat paratah paraha. That was the last mantra. Aksharad parataha paraha. Higher than the highest. If we can use such a such a term. Higher than the highest, that imperishable being without a form, all pervading, without birth and death, without prana, without mana, the lustrous being. He is or that is higher than the highest. So this was the second mantra. And the third is Etasma Jayate Prano Mana Sarvendriyanicha Kamba Yurjyoti Rapa Prithivi Vishwasya Dharini Etasma jayate prano Mana sarvendri yarnicha Kamba yurjo tirapa Prathe vishwasya dharine Etasma jayate Pranaha Manaha Sarvendriyani Cha Kam Vayuhu Jyotihi Apaha Pradhivi Vishwasya Dharini so, etasma jayate pranaha, etasma from this, etasma from this, jayate is originating. So, we can say originates. The verbal meaning is is originating, jayate. But we can say do originate. So from this originate what pranaha. Prana is prana. The vital energy which is holding 
this body mind intellect complex and at the same time which is holding the whole universe together that is in the the microcosmic and macrocosmic levels that is prana and prana is originating from this what was referred in the earlier mantras as the imperishable aksharam then manaha the mind there also we have to take in the in the microcosmic and macrocosmic level the individual and the cosmic level all of us do have a individual mind that is why we are speaking and uh, we are we are listening and we must understand the is a collective cosmic mind just like uh, trees and forest trees are part of forest and the forest is a collective form of individual trees in the same way individual mind is there and the cosmic so manaha that mind is uh, originating from this then sarvendriyani cha all the senses all the senses in the individual level we have different senses of cognition and of course organs of action gyanendriya and karmendriya and so in the in the samashti level also we have the sun we have the moon just as in the individual level there is cognition in the in the samashti level also but we cannot differentiate indriyas as we do in the case of individuals kam kam is space then vayu vayu e jyotihi fire apaha water prithvi this earth and the prithvi is qualified as vishvasya dharini which is holding everything together which is holding everything together so all the five elements all the five elements and these five elements they unite together and that's the effect of that uh, togetherness subtle elements will become gross elements
and when gross elements are again bound together they are taking the form of uh, this this phenomenon which we are we are perceiving and in which we are staying which we are experiencing for example this earth when we say earth we are meaning the gross form of that not the subtle the subtle we cannot perceive same is the case is water and air and fire and uh, space we are experiencing the grosser and uh, as an effect of exchanging or as an effect of coming together manifestation of uh, gross forms happen so there is an exchange of gunas exchange of guna means the subtle quality of say water it is being shared with all other elements the subtle quality of earth it is being shared with all other elements the subtle quality of fire it is being shared with all other elements so that uh, that sharing is happening and only because of that sharing subtle elements are becoming or taking the form of gross elements again these gross elements they are coming together and making bonds and the world we are experiencing with all its parts that come into existence so here as it is qualified as vishwasya dharini that which is holding everything together grows earth is meant so to consider that we have to go through all these uh, processes that is the subtle form of elements but we have to have a picture of that then how that is becoming the grosser so all these things we have to are you hearing yes sir mudi we can hear yeah, you yeah 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 so from this all these manifestations are coming all the phenomena which we call the universal phenomena are just but products of this absolute existence the imperishable so the subtle things and the grosser things that is the prana manaha and indriyani all these are subtle and the subtle elements kam vayuhu jyotihi apaha prithivi 
and of course the gross aspect of this vishwasya dharini all these are originating from that existence absolute so i am saying prana is there or i am saying mind is there let it be in the microcosmic or macrocosmic level and i am saying uh, uh, senses of cognition are there or i am saying uh, these five elements are there both in their subtle and grosser levels but see when i am saying is or are what is giving that existence to the mob what is giving that existence when i say prana is what is giving that existence to prana that existence is existence absolute and because of that existence absolute all this uh, phenomena are happening so think in that way not that uh, this this imperishable brahman is making something else it is getting mutated no it is not making anything else but because of that existence absolute all other existences are coming to exist see when i say i am here what is giving that that existence by which i am saying i am think that ponder on it over and over so this mantra is clearly saying this absolute existence it is behind all all phenomena in this universe whether in the in the subtle level or in the grosser level so etasma jayade prana there is another mantra Atmana esha prano jayate. So say is another mantra. Atmana esha prano jayate. That means this prana is being originated from atma. Atma is the existence absolute. so etasma jayate pranah in the same way manah sarvendriyani cha and all elements come vayu jyoti hi apah prithivi so we have to take in the subtle level and later in the gross level and when we say vishwasya dharini we have to take the grosser level so it is holding everything together so all this words all the manifestations both in the in the microcosmic and macrocosmic level or in the individual and the cosmic level everything is uh, existing because of that existence absolute 
So we are seeing this world. We are experiencing this. We are in this. Start from that. Begin the quest from that. Not that we have to leave this world. We can go away from this world. No. Start from there. What is behind this? Manifestations. By which all these are existing. So what is giving that existence? That is the quest. That is the quest for truth. So we are in this world that we begin from the world. Of course, we will transcend the realm of physical appearances and physical properties. But our journey starts from here, here alone. So for that, we have to uh, have different uh, branches of science, different branches of science are there. We will have to analyze the uh, chemical properties, physical properties, and so on and on. But at a certain level, when we reach, these physical explanations, they are not sufficient. That knowledge will come. And it is at that point of time We transcend that realm. And our inquiry will move more and more deeper. Until the realization of the impersonal existence absolute happens. So this is the way. So we are, uh, we are not negating the world at first. We are taking the world, we are analyzing the world, and we are inquiring what is giving the existence. And we are holding that existence absolute. We are catching that. That is the, that is the real quest. So, that is regarding this physical manifestation and the existence behind that. So, now, before going to the next mantra that we can do in our next sitting. If you want to ask anything, you can ask. And uh, before that, let me say something about the annual retreat. Every year, from December 23rd, from the very inception of the ashrama, there were Adhyatmika Antar Yoga. Antar Yoga means a retreat. 
a retreat camp. So many acharyas would come and we'll have classes, discussions, question answers, then uh, japa and dhyana, bhajana, many, many things together. So those who come to attend will have a different experience. And after one week camp, they will go back. That, is, that was the system. And the last year, because of this COVID, we were forced to cancel that. And this year, even now, that COVID protocol is there in our society. And we have to observe many, many such protocols. So many, uh, much limitations are there even now. So instead of canceling, like the last year, we are thinking to convene an under yoga. But the style is different. We are not inviting many acharyas. And only a limited number of inmates are allowed so as to keep social distancing. And we are insisting that they must bring full vaccination certificate. Of course, it will begin on December 23rd and will last up to 29th. We are planning to take the Sadhachara Anusandhanam of Bhagavan Bhashyakara, Shankaracharya. So those, but this will be in Malayalam. The language will be Malayalam. So those who are knowing Malayalam and are interested in participating, please do contact. Only a few members will be allowed in. So that is all about this year's retreat. Now, if you want to ask anything, you can ask. If I know, I will reply. Namaste. Uh, nam Namaste, Swamiji. Uh, I have a Namaste. question in continuation with the uh, last uh, sessions. The last session, uh, uh, Swamiji concluded uh, remembering about Sri Madhavananda Swamiji by saying that this is all about Madhavananda Ji and something about Vimalananda Ji Maharaj. So could you please uh, share memories? How did you hear about <laughs> Vimalananda Ji and uh, how you reached the ashram and how was your days as a student in the Gurukula Sampradaya, which is something um, other people might not have heard much. So you are uh, penetrating into the secrecies of uh, <laughs> Swami Chidananda Puri. <laughs> even, though you are, <laughs> even though you are asking about Swami Vibhalananda Ji, so you are trying to penetrate into the... Uh, <laughs> so I don't have any uh, secret thing. See, there are two parts in your question. One is about Swamiji Maharaj, Vimalananda Ji. And the other is how I came in contact with him. Two parts are there. Swamiji, he was a great scholar. Great scholar means 
in all darshanas and vyakarana kavya nataka and other branches of our our legacy he was a great scholar and at the same time he was a, a great vedanta how that uh, that metamorphosis happened in his life many times he explained so when he was a small child say of 2 years or 2 and a half years age a dog attacked him and the dog was mad dog with rabies and in those days getting such bite means gone but his mother took the child and went to sri narayana guru sanana guru do was uh, staying in those days near their house and he gave some herbal medicines some leaves some roots he gave and nothing happened to the child and he grew and when he was a student of uh, say upper primary school the family his guardians they were they were thinking to send him to english school it is before independence you see but one day the young sambashivan that was his pre monastic name he heard shri narayana guru is coming somewhere near their school so three four students getting permission from their teacher they went to meet shri narayana guru So Sri Narayana Guru was that much famous. These students were ordinary students. So how they can meet him? How they can approach him? So when they reached there, Sri Narayana Guru was uh, circled by so many prominent people of the society. and so this uh, ordinary students there was no chance for them to meet so there was a there was a small rock and they climbed on that actually it was not a rock it was a big stone and they climbed and they started making many noises to attract the attention of gurudev then gurudev saw them he called them so they went and prostrated then he gave bananas to all of them and specifically asked sambashivan to learn sanskrit you must go to sanskrit school and he went back to his home and said i met sudarna guru and gurudev asked me to study sanskrit so there was a there were some problems in their house difference of opinion one group said no 
we must send him to english school but his mother was adamant she said we got this child only because of the blessings of sri narayana guru and it is our duty to send him to sanskrita school so he was sent to sanskrita school so after completing sanskrita school studies matriculation that urge to learn more and more came to him and without asking the permission without telling anybody in the home he skipped out of the home in those days he knew that uh, the center of sanskrita studies is kashi so i must go there so somehow he reached there he had some money with him so with that he reached kashi and uh, without knowing the language hindi in those days he was terribly disturbed but somehow he met some sanyasins and uh, there was one or two sanyasins from kerala also so they asked what's your plan so i came to study sanskrita then one swami asked him, how you are going to study sanskrita as a normal student or as a sanyasi this was the question so this young man he had no plan to accept sanyasa what is sanyasa what is the use of accepting sanyasa why to accept sanyasa he knew nothing but when he heard this question he replied yes i am going to become a sanyasi and as a sanyasi i am going to study then the swami asked him so you come tomorrow morning you will get sanyasa and next morning he was given the okhar cloth and given the name what was the name actually i don't know and he was admitted to the sanskrita college university and he was studying there so after completing prakshastri he joined the shastri shastri is equivalent to degree ba plus bed so he was undergoing that then he met one great sanyasi and uh, in course of their conversation he said if you want to see a genuine swami you must go to gujarat and there is one madhavananda puri swami madhavananda puri you must meet him he is a great sanyasi and uh, hearing this without attending classes he went to gujarat he met swami ji but swami ji asked him no you must go back complete your shastri studies no swami i am going to stay with you and serve you no you must go there is no other way so he went back and uh, completed shastri studies accepted sanyasa diksha in the traditional way from madhavananda ji and in 1948 july 20th that is the guru purnima day of 1948 madhavananda ji entered mahasamadhi in those days swami ji was wandering through himalayas so actually he went to kailasa on foot via badrinath and when he came back he got the news of uh, the mahasamadhi of madhavananda ji so he came back running to madhavananda ashram mehmedabad gujarat and from 1948 to 2009 he was uh, there in the ashram 
as the head, as the owner, as everything. I came to reach there in 1987. 1987. So I was wandering in those days. Actually, after studying Prasthanatraya Bhashya, of course, with the help of some acharyas like uh, Swami Mardanandaji. Swami Jnananda Saraswati. He completed that studies. And when, uh, when I was a student of uh, second year degree, asked for the permission for going for sannyasa. And of course, parents didn't give. Instead of giving permission, father asked me, he gave two rupees and asked me to purchase some poison and give them so they can have that poison and you can go in the path of your moksha. Then I said, no, 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 no I, I will not go. I will not go. I am staying with you. I am a part of your family, so I am not going away. But you must accept within Today or tomorrow, this fellow will go. So to teach them, to make them understand that I lived with them. And of course, then underwent Prasthanatraya studies also. So, after uh, two, three years, after making them aware of the fact that this boy will go out tomorrow, day after tomorrow, so I went out of the home. And then I was uh, wandering and somehow reached one ashram and stayed there as a brahmachari. For some months, only some months. Then uh, I ran away from that ashram also. Then wandering with a, a pledge with it. But it was that I will not stay in any ashram because Anyas ashrams are uh, not good for a sadhaka. And the sannyasins are social parasites. All the sannyasins. All sannyasins are social parasites. So they are eating. How? Getting dakshina from householders. So householders are working. They are struggling. And sannyasins are leading a happy life without any work. So they are social parasites. So I am not going to accept sannyasa. I am not going to stay in any ashram. So I will uh, do my sadhana in the Himalayas. Near Gangaji, I will stay somewhere. So that was the thought with it. So reached, somehow reached Uttaragashi. Why this somehow I cannot explain because I was on the way to Badrinath on foot, of course, from Rishikesh to Badrinath. Then somehow from Deva Prayaga, instead of moving towards Badrinath, we missed the path and reached Uttaragashi. Actually, uh, nobody will believe this because. Main road is towards Uttarakashi. The other road is only a small, narrow path. 
but reach there. So in the midst of Ganja sadhus, I was asking with it, what nonsense is this? I traveled all this way and I'm in the midst of Ganja sadhus for what? So I, I will not get a place to do sadhana. However, next day, when I went for getting bhiksha, I was not having any vessel with me, no plate, no vessel, nothing, only some plastic covers were there. And those covers were also very old ones. So when the person in charge of the Anakshetra gave bhiksha, somehow this plastic cover, it was torn to pieces and all the rotis fell on the ground. So there were so many Swamis there. And one Swamiji, he shouted, Ayyo! So shouting Ayyo means he is a Malayali. Nobody will shout like that. So he's a Malayali. So I asked him, oh, oh, Maharaj, can I get a cloth from you so that I can clean this roti and take? Of course, you can have that. He gave and uh, we talked. His name was uh, Swami Narayanandaji. So he asked, you are very young. Where are you going? What is your plan? Then I said, my plan is to stay here on the bank of Gangaji in a kuti. So why can't you go to some ashrama and study? No, I will not go to any ashrama. You please help me to get a kutiya. Then he said, yeah, of course, I liked you. I liked you. Why? I don't know. He liked me. And he said, I will arrange a kutiya for you. A very best kutiya is there, just on the Ganga. And you can get that. But you will have to wait for seven days. Because now there is one Swami. He is going to Andhra Pradesh on the seventh day. And the next day, I will get the key and I will give you that. So that contract came. Then he asked, where you will stay all these seven days? I said, I will stay here. No, you are very young. You are not supposed to stay here in the midst of this ganja. So let me think. Then he asked, do you know cooking? Yes, I know. In those days, I was an expert in cooking. Not now, <laughs> many years past. I was an expert in cooking. Then said I, I said, yes, I can cook. Then he asked me, are you ready to go to an ashram as a cook? Then I said, yes, where it is? He said, it is Tapovan Kuti. Then I was feeling that much happiness within, oh, the place where Tapovanji Maharaj stayed and uh, did tapasya. That place, going and staying there, it was like a dream for me. Then he took me to the Brahmachari there. That, and he said, this man will cook for you. And I joined as a cook. So the plan was, I am not supposed to expose the inner secrets. I will stay there as a cook and I will, I will, not, I will not tell lies, but I must pretend as I will stay forever there as a cook. Because if we say I am only for seven days, he will not agree to accept. So that was the plan. So I went there and stayed. On the next day, when Prabhagara Nambudri came there, I think he may be hearing this or he will hear this later. He's a great sannyasi now. Swami Vasishthanandaji. He's now staying in Canada and USA. In those days, he was Prabhagara Nambudri. Earlier, he was a brahmachari in the Chinmaya mission. And then with the blessing of Chinmayanandaji Maharaj, he went out of Chinmaya mission and he married 
that prabhagara nambudari came to tapavan kuti uttarakashi why he came even he do not know his plan was to come to haridwar and go back then someone attracted him from vidya you go to uttarakashi you go to uttarakashi you go to uttarakashi so he came so when he go to uttarakashi he will stay in the tapavan kuti and therefore he came there so we had talks then he asked one question you are very young and i think you are educated also what is meant by educated i don't know even now i do not know what is the meaning of that but he asked me so why you are staying here as a cook why can't you go to some ashram and learn shastras then i said no i am not ready to go to any ashram ashrams are not good places for sadhakas and all sanyasins are social parasites then he asked two questions can't you be a sanyasi who is not a parasite we can't you if all sanyasins are parasites in your mission why can't you be one and if all ashramas are not good for sadhakas why can't you make one ashram a best place for sadhakas so that questions somehow they penetrated into the mind of that young man and next morning i said yes i am ready then he said there is a great scholar by name swami vimalananda puri he is the head of madhavananda ashram in ahmedabad so we can go there are you ready then i said yes as you said i am ready then he said there are two conditions one first is you must not tell him that you had learned prasthana praya you must sit before him as a new student who is hearing prasthana praya for the first time never say i had learned prasthana praya yes i am ready for that that was the first thing second is swami ji is that much hot tempered and you must be ready to suffer anything yes i am ready so we started directly from uttarakashi we went to rishikesh dayanand ashram and stayed there for one or two days and there was one great mahatma there swami prajeshwar anand ji he gave all blessings he said go my child you go and stay with bimalanand ji it is the place of a great mahatma madhavanand ji so you can you it will be a blessing for you if you are staying there with that blessing prajeshwar anand ji send me and the madhadipati of that ashrama he told me you will not be able to live there for 3 days and if you stay there for 3 weeks or one month i will prostrate before you so with that terrible feelings <laughs> i started and i reached there then swami ji on the first sight he asked me so you are a malayali yes so what's your name so in those days i was traveling with a name swami ramakrishna das with that name i was wandering oh that's a good name but it is not good for a sanyasi swami ramakrishna das is a good name but it is not good for a sanyasi 
So I can give you a name. And that name is Swami Chidananda. He said. Later, when you accept sannyasa diksha in the traditional way, uh, the guru will give you the name, add that name Puri. But now, your name is Swami Chidananda. Then I became Swami Chidananda and stayed with Swamiji for some years. And uh, as per his words, went to Rishikesh Kailasa Ashrama and accepted sannyasa in the year 1989 on the Shivaratri day. That is all about those days. There are many, many more things, but now we can conclude. So this is the direct answer to your questions. Now you will come next in our next class with the question. Sami, you please tell, <laughs> explain what are your experiences there, how he behaved, how he lived. All such questions may come. If they come, we can we can see in our next satsanga. Today we can conclude this. Thank you, sir. Namaste. 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 <laughs> Om Bhadram Karne Bhishranuyama Deva Bhadram Pashe Makshabhirya Jatra Stirai Rangai Stushtuvam Sastanu Bhit Vyashema Deva Hitam Yadayuhu Sustena Yendro Vridhasrava Sustena Pusha Vishwaveda Sustena Starkshio Arishta Nemi Sustena Brihaspadir Dadhatu Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti He. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu. Guru Devo Maheshwaraha. Guru Sakshat Param Brahma. Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha.